Within months of his wife Cornelia's death, Caesar has raised enough political support to become a senator. One of the ways one becomes a senator in Rome is by being elected to one of the junior positions on the Cursus Honorum. This is how Caesar becomes a senator. In Caesar's day, there are about 600 senators. Now, the word Senate comes from the Latin senex, which means old or wise man. And this fits the Senate to the T. They are the oldest, wisest, but really what they are is the most powerful men in Rome. Julius Caesar. Senators. I think that Caesar, in many ways, was very idealistic. He really wants to bring about change to Rome, to lift up the poor people. I think he really does want to do good for the Roman Republic. The young Caesar often backs idealistic popular causes. And this seems like a dashing rebellion against the establishment. But in fact, popular causes are a well-known route to power. Every decision he makes as a young man is designed to cement his image as a supporter of the people. Once you're elected into the Senate, you're there for life, like the US Supreme Court justices. However, you could lose your seat. One of the ways is if you have to declare bankruptcy. Politicians were not paid. Not only would they be spending on their campaign funds, but they would be expected to cover civic infrastructure or projects, so they might have to repair bridges or roads. Caesar is not a wealthy man when he begins his career in politics. He runs up tremendous debts. By 64 BC, Caesar is in so much debt that two of his fellow politicians have actually gone bankrupt, just trying to keep pace with him. As Caesar's debt balloons, five years into his career as a senator, he decides to stage gladiatorial games for the city. This is an incredible opportunity to display his generosity to the people. Caesar scours gladiator schools across Italy for their best fighters. Caesar wants to put on the biggest show in Rome's history, but gladiators don't come cheap, and Caesar needs some extra financial help. At this point, Caesar owes somewhere in the range of 31 million sesterces. That's over $100 million in today's money. It means every Roman creditor is on the lookout for Caesar. They know his name. They know what he owes. As Caesar's debts continue to rise, his creditors become more and more impatient. And there's only one man in Rome who can bail him out. Caesar, you wanted to see me. Crassus, thank you for coming. Caesar asks for Crassus to essentially be the guarantor on his loans. But in return, Caesar will become Crassus's man. This is an extremely risky move from Caesar. He's gambling here that he will get high enough on Rome's political ladder that he will be able to pay Crassus back. If he loses the next election, he could be looking at making an enemy of one of Rome's most powerful men and an effective end to his political career. For the next several years, Caesar and Crassus are both political allies and economic partners. Caesar has to rise for Crassus to be paid back. And now, only one office remains for Caesar to take, the consulship. When the Romans got rid of their kings, they replaced them with the consuls. So the consuls acted as the commander-in-chief of the Roman military. They were proposing all bills to the Senate the consuls also acted as the chief judicial officer. They were the ones who passed judgments and who executed punishment. Caesar is now 40 years old, which is the youngest anyone can get elected to the consulship. The consulship is the high point of any Roman's career. This is the position that Caesar has been preparing to take his entire life. But Caesar's route to the consulship is not easy. Rome's two most powerful men, Crassus and Pompey, hate each other, and they've spent years fighting each other.
running for the consulship, Caesar is now part of Crassus's faction, which means Pompey's supporters will be gunning for him. He has to find some sort of middle ground that will allow him to get elected. But Caesar is an incredibly savvy political operator. Roman politics is a snake pit, and Caesar navigates it with incredible dexterity. Pompey, thank you for coming. Why the secrecy? I'm not interested in playing games. Stop. Please, just hear what I have to say. You two should be the most powerful men in Rome, but you put all of your energy into fighting each other. What if instead you worked for each other? Why would we? Back me to become consul, and I'll make sure the Senate works for you. The three of us. <laughs> We'd be invincible. Why should I trust you? I have one child, my daughter. She's everything to me. I offer her to you as your wife. We'd be bonded in blood, family. Pompey wants land for his ex-soldiers. He hasn't been able to get that through the Senate. Crassus wants financial support for his tax collectors. He hasn't been able to get that through. And Caesar, of course, wants to become consul. Caesar is basically gambling here that all three men are self-interested enough to put aside their personal beef and work together. The secret deal that Caesar persuades Pompey and Crassus to agree to is called the Triumvirate. It literally means rule of three. Individually, they've all been able to get some of what they want, but never all of it. Together, they can dominate Roman politics for years to come. Caesar immediately leans on his deal with his fellow members of the Triumvirate, Crassus and Pompey, to make sure he's elected consul. Bribery was rampant in ancient Roman elections. And cast your vote for Julius Caesar. You could buy votes, and it was not even considered bad manners to do this. Caesar, 24 votes and counting. Keep it up. Voting is only for men. But this doesn't mean women carry no influence. After Cornelia's death, Caesar does remarry, but he is also known as a bit of a womanizer. Servilia, Selenus, how lovely to see you both. Servilia is Cato's sister. She also happens to be Caesar's mistress. They've been together for years, even though both of them are married. In addition to being Caesar's mistress, Servilia plays a very important role here as a kind of back-channel negotiator of the ancient world. Senator. Can I count on your support? Selenus will back you up. My brother's politics aren't ours. Candidates in Roman elections wore special togas, the toga candida, which means bright white. A Roman who was wearing the toga candida was a candidatus, one dressed in bright white. This is where we get our modern word, candidate. Caesar is an extremely charismatic politician. He's attractive, he's witty. In fact, 
One could say that he has all the talents. There's a lot riding on this election day for you, Caesar, and for all of us. We will see you later at the victory party. And it had better be a victory party. The stakes could not be higher for Caesar. He literally cannot afford to lose this election. But Caesar had no need to worry. The election day proves to be everything that Caesar could have wished for, because he tops the ballot by a landslide. So he is elected consul. 